in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for tonight. We ask that you instruct us by your spirit. We ask that you release upon us tonight a fresh grace and ability even as we step into deeper corridors to receive instructions and perspective as touching that which you want to do in our lives and in our generations. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't be deceived and God bless you. I just need you to stir your spirit so that you will not hear me in your head. You will hear me in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's not yet time for impartation. Hallelujah. Peace be still. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. I release peace. Thank you, Father. Be seated, God bless you. Um, I needed to stay your spirit, man, so you don't hear me in your head. You know, you are saturated, you have heard so much already. I would like to share with us this evening very briefly. Just help the sister to sit down. By the way, tonight will be a night of fire. Yes, tonight will be a night of fire. We will not just instruct you, but we will release the deposit of life from whence those instructions come into your lives. So that you will walk into the experience of that which you would have received tonight. We may not be able to communicate everything articulately and cognitively, but there is also another strategy of transference of spiritual knowledge is by the impartation of the spirit. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 8 he said for that we love you. We did not only communicate to you the gospel of Jesus but the very substance of our soul. So that which formed the soul structure of the apostles there was a technology in the spirit by which they could impart the same to others. So tonight, the extent to which the Lord will allow, we will teach, and then we will release the power of God. I pray that the Lord will help you to enlarge your capacities to receive. Because I came with so much in my spirit. The past three days, I've ministered in three local governments in the state, and I've this is my eighth ministration. And usually, the last lap is the climax. So we will bring counsel from the very heights of Zion in the course of my ministration tonight. I came with my friend and brother, Pastor Victor. Ben. I will carry you to a height by the teaching. And then I will bring up my own for 10 minutes to add some, some flavor. You know, there is something we call pepper. When, when you eat pepper, your eyes become open. So when we bring pepper and garnish with what I have done, then I will release the impartation of My voice is already damaged, so the microphones must have to work. You give me volume, alright? Give me volume. I need so much volume because my voice is at a very low threshold. The energy in my spirit, my voice cannot conduct it tonight. So I will need the support and the agency of your amplifiers. In the name of Jesus. We are looking at the subject of equipping the bride of Christ. 
we are the subject of equipping the body of Christ. What we call in the very raw apostolic and kingdom term, the ecclesia. How do we equip the body? How do we equip the church? The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, He said to some, He gave to be apostles. To some, He gave to be prophets. To some, He gave to be evangelists. To some, He gave to be pastors and teachers. And the reason He gave the offices to the body is not because He wanted to create unnecessary infrastructures to make the kingdom a complex reality. The reason he gave the offices was because he had an agenda. An agenda that was consistent with equipping his body. So he said the offices were given for the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting is the word catatismos. It means to equip and in the generic term of that word, it means to equip with light. It means to be granted the capacity to walk in spiritual knowledge so that you can apprehend realities in the spirit and have the experience of those realities. These offices come to bring you into the fullness of the potentials of God that are available to you as a believer. So you may stumble upon the doctrine of healing and you will read the whole scriptures about healing but you may discover that your ability to intellectually explain the doctrine of healing capturing all the conditions of exegesis may not bring you into the experience of healing. And Jesus having understood that fact that it was possible for believers to walk in frustration without having experience of spiritual realities he decided to equip a few among them and gave them the capacity to bring the rest of the body into the experience of the things that are available to them so the reason we have meetings like this is not necessarily because we want to look at the bible again and renew our minds there's a place for renewing the mind there's a place for enhancing ourselves in the understanding of doctrine so that our convictions and the foundations of the faith can be solid. In fact, Paul said, Cardinal in the apostolic office is the ability through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to set doctrine in order. Because doctrine becomes the basis for which the heritage of the believer can be couched. Without doctrine, we will not understand the boundary of possibilities that we have in God. So Paul said, as a wise master builder, he came to establish the foundation of the faith. And the foundation Paul came to establish is the doctrine of Christ. So it is part of our call to establish doctrine and to build believers on the foundation of truth. But much more than an understanding of doctrine is the ability to apprehend spiritual knowledge. So in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible said concerning Samuel, he said the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to Samuel. So you begin to wonder because Samuel was living in the house of Eli, the priest. And one of the cardinal responsibilities of, of the priest is to be the custodian of the oracles of God. It is the duty of the priest to preserve the heritage of God and to communicate the same to the body. In fact, most of the assignment of the priest is to read the Torah to the body and then to explain to them the context and the counsel of God that were captured in those generations as capsules in the Torah. So you begin to wonder why Samuel eh, will be living in the house of Eli the priest, learning the way of priesthood, which part of will be to study the Torah every day and night. And the Bible will still go as far as saying, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to Samuel. That means beyond the letter, there is a spirit of life that is enshrined 
and encapsulated in the letters. And in verse 21 of that scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible said, The Lord appeared again in Shiloh. The Lord appeared in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So it was another level of encounter with the world that brought Samuel into the understanding of the counsel of God and he began to apprehend God as an experiential knowledge. That was when his multifaceted dimension began to express itself. Samuel would have remained in the temple and lived like a typical priest because he would have been taught the ordinances of God and all he would have done was to learn how to carry out the ordinances in the, in the tabernacle. But part of what was written concerning Dan Samuel was to be a prophet. There was no way reading the Torah would have brought him to a point of becoming the prophet of God unless as the word of the Lord appeared to him. So if the body of Christ must be equipped, then the body of Christ must be equipped with spiritual knowledge. I told us yesterday when I was teaching in the morning that the first time Jesus made reference to the church, there were two things Jesus revealed to us. The first thing Jesus revealed was that the church was God's strategy of betting dimensions of heaven on earth because he said thou art Peter and upon this revelation I will build my church so the church became not just an institution but a strategy so whatever God wants to institute on the earth that the, the, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against that thing must have its root in the spirit so we understood that for our lives to sustain a texture that Satan cannot compromise then we must live our life from heaven so Jesus was walking in Galilee and he said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So the reason you could not compromise the texture and the integrity of the work of Jesus on earth was because his reality was born from the Spirit. So he told Peter, he said, flesh and blood, I have not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. So your calling, your ordination, your assignment on earth, everything you may ever become must have its root in the Spirit. If you have not been able to catch it in the Spirit, no matter how you struggle on earth, you cannot bet it. You may desire to serve the will of God, but if you have not been able to catch the will of God in the spirit, you cannot manifest it in time. That was the first strategy that Jesus revealed to us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. There are most of you here that want to live righteously. You attend meetings, you attend crusades, you cry and you run to the altar. And when you leave that crusade, you feel that you begin to live righteously. But after two weeks, you discover that that feeling you had from that crusade begins to die. So the things that you were able to withstand for two weeks, those things challenge you after one month and you fall again. The reason is because the dimension of righteousness, you have not seen it in the spirit. The day you see it in the spirit and you understand it from its root in the spirit, your life will naturally become an effulgence of righteousness. That's one of the crises of the believer walking on the face of the earth trying to do things that are spiritual by natural abilities. So the guy wants the wisdom of God and he's reading books. He thinks by reading books he will stumble upon the wisdom of God. The Bible said the wisdom that is of God comes from above. So before you can walk in divine wisdom, you must have understood how to find it in the spirit. Anything you don't touch in the spirit, you cannot manifest in time. Because time is not a realm of origin. Time is a realm of manifestation. So people want to begin things in time and to manifest in time. It doesn't work. That was the error of Saul. He wanted to destroy the church and when Jesus appeared to him he said, Saul, Saul, it is hard to kick against the pricks. What you are fighting against was born in the spirit. You want to become an invisible personality? You have the ancient moors in your village. They will go and invoke your name and fire will appear. The strategy is not to quote scriptures. The strategy is to apprehend spiritual knowledge. So Jesus revealed that strategy. He said that is what the church is about. Betting things that have their root in the spirit on earth. And the second thing Jesus revealed was that the church was a theater of spiritual legislation. It is the church that God gives the authority to defend the interest of God on earth. So anything that is happening on earth that is not consistent with the will of God then it means the church allowed it. So when God comes, he will hold the church responsible for the things happening on earth because those responsibilities have been given to the church. Did you read in your Bible, Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18? He said, if I tell a wicked man, you will die. 
and you don't tell him, he will die. But I will demand his blood of your hand. It's called the responsibility of legislation. Most of you, there is darkness in your family. You are crying, Lord, have mercy. And then the angels that walk with you are telling you that, no, the solution of this family is with you. The problem with you is that you have not mastered the act of spiritual legislation. And I said, one of the ways of carrying out and bridging these two assignments at the same time is the weapon of prayer. I say, by prayer, we can travel to the spirit. So you can read the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you recited that scripture for 10 years, but you didn't know the meaning of love. How many of us recited that scripture from primary school? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But you remained a sinner for many years. But if you want to understand the, rea the reality of that scripture, then you need to catch it in the spirit. So I said, the only way to achieve that, or one of the most potent ways to achieve that, is by the instrumentality of prayer. So I said, the best and the most potent way to equip the church is to teach the church the way of prayer. Prayer becomes the key to make available realities that are in heaven on earth. That was why the life of Jesus was predominantly characterized by prayer. So when you see a Christian who is frustrated, before you talk much, go and check his prayer life. Check the content of his prayer. Then you will understand why he's frustrated. Most of them don't have a prayer life. They pray, but they don't have a prayer life. A prayer life is a life of constant communion with the Holy Spirit. It's not go to the presence of God, do what you want to do, and come out. No. That Christian will suffer frustration. A Christian that lives like an invisible personality on earth is a Christian that has developed a life of prayer. The moment that Christian becomes a man of prayer, anything he wants to do flows naturally. So he's thinking, I want to start a business. And then he goes to sleep. And then he sees himself doing the business. He doesn't need to suffer so much to find out, Lord, what will you have me do? The moment prayer becomes his DNA, spiritual realities become his experience. So we took time yesterday morning and we prayed. And we prayed. And most of you for the first time, you ascended into heaven. How many of you saw a vision when you were praying on that morning? You saw a vision or you received an instruction or you had a knowing about something. Can you wave? Look at the hands. Were you asking God for it? But you prayed until you hit an energy level. And that energy level where you hit, those instructions were there. So the moment you were able to ascend to that level, let me tell you, everything God wants you to do now, they are in energy levels. As a scientist, I know it's like the back of my hand. There are certain things in your life that you have been asking God for. Just go and lock yourself and pray for 12 hours. You will discover that you will stumble on those things. Because those things were waiting for you, but they are in heights in the spirit. You have not reached that height. That's why you've not found it. So I use the scripture to explain that reality to you. I told you the Bible said, They that wait upon the Lord, they mount up. So when we pray, what we are actually doing is that we are mounting up. He said, You daily beloved, Jude 1 20, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So you mount up. And the Bible says, When we mount up, like God, we will run, we will not be weary. We will walk, we will not fail. That means that possibility was always in us. But the reason we are fainting is because we have not mounted up. The Bible said, Have you not heard? Has it not said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? He said, He giveth power to the faint, and unto them that has no mind, he increases strength. But how does God increase strength? He said, Even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. He said, They mount up. So God's strategy of increasing your strength is not to say, Lizzy, take strength. No. He has created an economy in the spirit. It's called the economy of tongues. And every time you engage it, you mount up and the help of God becomes available because you will enter a new atmosphere. That was why we took time to pray that morning. And tonight, I want to show you another dimension. Equipping the church. Ah, I sat under a lot of Bible studies. I became so big in my head. I became so proud. 
I go to places. If they are talking, I'll say, ah, that is it. Check the scripture. Check the scripture. Check the scripture. When they read it, they'll say, oh boy. Then I'll do like this. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. I became proud. Have you checked your lives? <laughs> people are doing something. They call and say, kai, kai, kai. I, uh, I, why are you people like this? This is a simple thing now. Okay, do like this, do like this, do like this. But that thing you are saying, do like this, do like this, do like this. You too, you are struggling with it. The key is prayer. If prayer is not your life, you will not have experience in the things of God. The second thing I want to show you now is what I call the protocol of transformation. There are many ways God equips the church. Huh. If you don't understand, you will think when you come to church for 10 years, you will change. No, God is not the God of evolution. He's the God of creation. It's only in evolution that they tell you, when you do for long, you will become like this. No, no, no. There are laws in the spirit. Until you hit the mark, nothing will happen. And the day you hit the mark, things will change. It may take you 10 years to hit the mark. But if you don't hit it, nothing will happen. And God dwells in a timeless zone, so he's not moved. Did you read in your Bible when they say he's the ancient of days? You are the one who will lose, not you. That's why we must labor to enter into the rest. I want to show you the protocol of spiritual transformation. You see, there are many ways to view the church. It's possible to view the church from, in, from an individualistic perspective. Because the Holy Ghost tabernacles in you, you have become the house of God. So we could view you as the church. It's possible to view the church as an institution where the possibilities and the counsel of God are dished out. It's possible to view the church as a territorial infrastructure. You see that in the book of Revelation. The church in Philadelphia. The church in Laodicea. So the church can be seen as a territorial infrastructure. The church can also be seen as a national collective body. So there are many ways of viewing the church. I don't have time to look into all of those diversities. But when I refer to the church tonight, if it means an individual, if it affects you as an individual, then deal with it like that. If it affects you as a body, deal with it like that. If it affects you as a territory, deal with it like that. But we understand now that you could be the church, your fellowship could be the church. The territory where you are sitting and doing the work of God could be the church. Alright? So, how does God reach out to the church and equip the church? There are many deficiencies that we sustain because we are a fallen people. Your spirit is saved. Your soul is being saved. Your body will be saved. And because the three of you collectively form you, there are lots of things that you cannot have automatic experience. So you can be in the house of God, you lifted holy hands like this. But God gives you an instruction and your soul cannot handle it. At that point, you are faithless. And the Bible says, whatever is not of faith is sin. So while you are lifting up holy hands like this, you just see it. You know why? Your spirit is in fellowship with God, but your soul cannot handle the matter. So while your hands is lifted in, in holy, holy hands, is lifted like this, your soul is also troubling you. And you could lift your hand like this. Your spirit man is perfect, but your body is strong with all kinds of sensations. Sensations all over your body. Now, if you have spiritual knowledge, that will not distract you. You will keep pressing until your soul and your body align. Are we together? That's what we call the protocol of transformation. Causing the soul and the body to become one with the spirit. And that level is another level of equipping that God gives to the church. What does God do to a man? To make his soul and his body to become one with his spirit. The day that begins to happen in your life, that day you become a powerful Christian. There are so many deficiencies that you see in the church. Some people in the church or some congregation are people of the flesh. But God of necessity also needs those people that are people of the flesh. There are some places where you come, they are a fearful people. So they can never dare to do anything for God. 
God still meets them. You come to some places, the people are an arrogant people. God still needs them. You come to some places, they are so scholarly. Everything is in their head. Like talk about the Greek, he said they seek wisdom. Some church is about the mind. So they talk things so intellectual. God still needs them. You come to some church, they are rebellious folks. God still needs them. So how will God, what is the strategy that God puts in place to equip the body, even though there are diversities of weaknesses? It's called the protocol of transformation. Aya! <laughs> how does God equip the church? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How does God bring the church to the point of transformation? When I study the scriptures, sometimes I'm grieved. If I see what God wrought to the fathers of old, that hadn't the Holy Ghost dwelling on their inside, I'm grieved most of the times. The Bible gave a chronicle of the exploits of the fathers of faith. These men were representatives of the body of Christ on earth. Some of them were not even a company. There were times when the body was an individual. But they had so much power and capacity. And these guys had in the Holy Ghost. How did they become so mighty with God? We come to church in our day and the church has become a social gathering. You come to the house of God, it's about a show, about good lessons, about excellence. And even the very borders where we dwell, darkness is almost swallowing us up. What is the difference between what we are doing now and what the fathers did? That's the body that should be in the heart of any body that can bear the body in the heart of the father. Men without the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, these men rattled the foundations of nations. They had the power to shut down institutions. He said, they obtained promises. They wrought righteousness. You know what righteousness is? What it means they wrought. That means they demonstrated righteousness as their lifestyle. They quenched the violence of fire. They shot the mouth of lions. They put to flight the armies of the alien without the Holy Ghost dwelling on their inside. How did they stumble on God? Some of them in their days, the scriptures have not been written. How did they get to know God so much that they made so much impact? Now we have the Holy Ghost. Now we have eternal life. Now the faith of the Son of God. Yet, even the crisis in our lives cannot be resolved. A believer suffering from addiction for five years and he says he has the Holy Ghost. Witchcraft ravaging a family. A girl of ten years is initiated into witchcraft and he can destroy a family of fifteen believers. All of them don't talk him. What's the mystery that has made us so weak? These guys never read any book about God. They walked in the spirit until they found God for themselves and they apprehended him. Their lives became spiritual possibilities. Some of them, the things they did were the things that were written as the law of Moses. So their lives will match the standard of God. And then we come and say we are Christians. We pride ourselves in talking in tongues. 
The guy come for prayer meeting. He carries the mic. And at the end of the day, he wants to create an impression that is the prayer chapter. His motivation is that day. So everybody hails him that this is a prayer champion and he has hit the zenith of spirituality. The guy comes and in the Bible study he wants to display how much scripture he knows but he cannot shake anything in the territory. Meanwhile, Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Now we come to teach believers how to live righteously. We teach believers good character. The monks in the Shaolin temple, they don't teach them character. Through meditation, they enter into celestial realms and their characters are impeccable. When we come to church, we have to teach believers who's and thoughts. Meanwhile, the Bible says, How can we walk in the spirit? They say, Now there is therefore no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life in Christ Jesus have set me free. The law of life is supposed to be your first teacher in the place of the spirit. But many believers still need to be taught how to live well. Because there is no interaction with life. How did the elders know God so much that they demonstrated what they demonstrated? The Bible said concerning Abel. That's the second generation of humankind. After the rebellion, God drove them from the garden. But the man called Abel still had a way of tapping into the level and instituting a possibility that even Jesus will reckon. It was Abel that the Bible said gave a more excellent offering, sacrifice, than gave. How did Abel know? That the only way to impress a spirit is by sacrifice. Who taught him? A man that had no teacher come to a point where his life becomes a revelation that the only way a mortal can please a spirit is by sacrifice. How did he know it? So the life of Abel became a theater that defined the meaning of love from the context of God. Jesus came many years after that. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. So what Jesus was teaching as a doctrine was the life of Abel. Jesus came to teach them what love meant, what Abel lived love as a lifestyle. It was the life of Abel that revealed that the object of love in the spirit is sacrifice. How did he know it? Men like Noah will reveal to us through his life that the only way you can serve the spirit is by reverence. So the Bible said, God, after he commanded Noah, he moved with fear. So if there is no fear of God in your life, you can't serve him. We carry microphones, we speak in tongues, but arrogance is the energy that we emit from our spirit. We sit here, but without the fear of the Lord, even when we pray, we pray without reverence. But here is a man that never read any scripture. He knew that the only way service can be accepted in the courts of God is by the fear of the Lord. And many years later, Solomon will come and speak by the Spirit and say the fear of them is the beginning of wisdom. So Noah's life was the author that pioneered spiritual wisdom. Because he was the one that revealed the fear of the Lord to humankind. So the life of Noah did not be what accepted service means. Life also is the gateway into wisdom. How did they walk in so much dimension? We see why we are weak. We do the same thing we they do, but we don't have the same result. In our day today, if God says he wants to destroy the earth, people will go and build arcs. But the ark they will build, they will take it with gold because they will think it's about excellence and class. But when Noah built, he built in fear. So Paul said, walk out your salvation with fear and reverence. If God told us today that we destroy this world with water, that we should build an ark, you will see the ark that people will build. Ark for them, we 
be a function of beauty and glory. That, there's nothing wrong with it. But there will be no fear. It will be our mastery and expertise. Excellence. Even your life will be not into his spirit. If the only beauty you carry is what you bear for yourself. No one revealed to us that the only thing spirits accept is fear. How much of the fear of God do you have? We come, we talk in tongues loud. We think it's about volume. So when they want to pray in tongues, they add the volume and they are praying without beauty. The potency of tongue is not in the volume. And it's not in how fast it is spoken. It is in the supply of the Spirit. But where is the fear of the Lord? When we come to a good believer, we tell them a lot of things. The things that this man had that gave them power to subdue the foundations of nations. They are things that have important significance. When a spirit comes to judge you or check you out, he may not even remember you are wearing clothes. It is the aroma from your life that he receives. And some of the constitute aroma is the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord. How much of it? We have become fellowship presidents. It's about strategy, it's about wisdom. Church service now is a sequence of excellence. Does God abhor excellence? No! But where is his reverence? When he comes, there are things he checks first. That was why when he spoke to Noah to build the ark, he didn't first check the dimensions of the ark. What God noticed first was that Noah moved with fear. So fear in the heart of Noah was more important to God than the consistency in building the ark, even though that was important. When God tells you to do what you do, what are the first indicators that your life reveal? When we come to preach, it's about comportment. Man of God, bless you. This is why we are weak. This is why we need the people. But what does God do to a man to bring him to that point? Is another syllabus. We have informative Bible study, but we have transformational Bible study. There is a Bible study that only the Holy Ghost Himself can teach you. Read the Bible, meditate on it, master it. It is very beautiful. I do the same. But when you have gathered the raw material in your spirit, are ready for transformational Bible study. Then the Holy Ghost comes and He begins to teach you. And that doctrine is consistent with the effect of the fall in your life. If the effect of the fall in your life is flesh, there is a specific doctrine the Holy Ghost has to deal with flesh. If the effect of the fall in your life is fear, there is a specific doctrine the Holy Ghost has for you. If the effect of your life of the fall on your life is pleasure. There is a doctrine for you. And I want to show you very quickly how God equips the church through transformation and Bible study. And you will see why most of you are not growing. Because you know the Bible in your head, but you violate the protocol of transformation and Bible study. And I speak this with more emphasis on those of you that sense the call of God upon your life. Because that is what will make you. If you don't sustain the protocol of transformational Bible study, forget it. You will tell everybody you are a prophet until you start seeing gray hair on your jaw and on your head. What made the patriarchs are the same thing that will make us in our generation. For a man of the flesh, there is a Bible study for him. For a man of pleasure, there's a Bible study for him. Hope oh, you know some of you here have never fasted six to six. But you have been a Christian for 15 years. You know your problem? Your God is your belly. You come to church and you lift holy hands, but see where your God is. The Bible said their God is their belly. They live for pleasure. Even when they know God wants them to do something, you say, Oh boy, I could die. Oh. Some will say, It's only the living that serve the Lord. It's only the living. It's only the living. Living for appetite. There's a Bible school for you. There's a doctrine of the Holy Ghost for you. I want to show you those doctrines very quickly. What is your category? You know, we are talking about equipping the believer. 
yesterday I came here, and the way we equip you was to get you to pray until your spirit, the chambers of your spirit broke up. Today I want to bring you another kind of teaching to equip you. You may not understand what I'm saying now. Don't worry. Hear the message after six months. Some of the things you think you've heard, you don't you have not heard them. Because these things I'm telling you, they are flowing from my spirit. They are the things that the Holy Ghost are putting me that I'm communicating. I'm not talking to you by reading the Bible. I'm telling you what has made me. And go and ask the fathers. It's the same thing that has made them. All those prophets and their money devotion as you read. Have you heard any of the fathers tell you they were made by a devotion? You, you idolize. There's nothing wrong with it. Because it helps you plan your day. But my brother, if that is all you eat, you will be a babe for a long time. I will say, when you ought to be teachers, you have need of being taught the first principles of the oracles of God. He said, but strong will belongs to them. Who by reason of use, that's experiential doctrine. Who by reason of use, have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. I want to teach you the experiential dimension of Bible study. So that as you leave this conference, when you go to the market, you will know that you are still in the school. Because your class may begin when you enter the hostel. Your class may begin when you enter the market. Those classes you have been violating, I want to show you how they have the key for changing your life. A man of appetite, who is a man of affluence, how does God reach him? That's the first I want to show you tonight. You know, some of you here, you are from rich homes. So when it's 7 a.m., as they wake you up, Amara, they will call your name five times before you hear the last one. Then you, you carry yourself like this to the dining table. And when you sit down, there's already egg, there is chicken, there is talking. And then you check. Someone egg, I want talking. Sometimes the whole food they arrange, you say you don't want anyone. You want boiled egg. And you say yes, ma'am. Then when you want to serve God, God now tells you that you will begin with 40 days fasting and prayer. <laughs> then there is crisis. Have you met those type of people? 10 a.m. in the morning, they say, I have not eaten since morning. Since morning. When it... <laughs> 10 a.m. I have not eaten since morning. Ah! When is morning? Morning have not begun. You have not eaten since morning. Meanwhile, that person may be a prophet. And the only way that person can enter into the room of his ordination is by the way of fasting and prayer. What God what do to that man to remove him from that place where his belly has become his God is called transformation and doctrine. What God does to such people is what we call the release of bodies. God brings a body to the heart of that person. I don't know the intelligence by which God does what he does. But what he does is that he furnishes a body. And those bodies will be coming to him periodically. Maybe every, every first week of the month, he receives a body. He receives a body. If he attends to those bodies long enough, one day he will wake up and then he will see an angel standing in his room. What has happened to him? That body has become a tool of navigating him in the path of his destiny. That's why we must not be theologians before God use us. In the days of the fathers, some people only knew two scriptures and they ran with it all their lives. And they shook nations. This is not making a case that you shouldn't study your Bible. But I'm telling you that there are things God teaches you that changes your life. It's called the system of bodies. Did you read about Moses? Moses was in Egypt. He was raised as a prince in Egypt from infancy. All he knew were the pleasures of Egypt. In fact, the Bible wrote it categorically. He called it the pleasures of Egypt. Ah, I don't have time to show you the pleasures of Egypt. The pleasures of Egypt, the way of wanton living, the way of wantonness, the way of water, the way of sorcery, and the way of immorality. The way of Egypt. That's why today, prophetically, Egypt is called a type of the world. So the highest levels of pleasure, the master, the act in Egypt. Hope you know, 
modern education began in Egypt. So these guys were wise men. They knew how to create pleasure that it will knock your soul down. Even when you are sleeping, you will be having pleasure and fall. Have you been to some hotels before? As you are entering the hotel like this, from outside, you, the, the, the AC is fired room to they call it the outside. So when you enter outside, the rug you will match with the supreme. Your shoe will sink inside the rug. So you will not feel your leg again. You don't want to. I'm still walking. The intelligence of pleasure. When you now enter your room, the light you will see, you will not know whether it is blue or orange. There is a way the light will be so soft so that it can calm your soul. In case you came with breath, with, with tension, the light is able to calm you down. And then when you go to the bed, you discover the bed is moving. You sit on the bed, then the bed is moving like this. So that when you sleep, the bed will be floating with you. Even when you are sleeping, you will be dreaming. The intelligence of pleasure. The Egyptians were masters of the ways of pleasure. They knew how to infuse pleasure in you so much that you will forget your name. That was where Moses dwelt. But what Moses did not realize was that the man that lived for pleasure, the Bible said he's dead while he lived in it. So if you are living for pleasure, there will be no record about you in heaven. So he said, him that liveth in pleasure, he is dead even while he liveth. So for 40 years, Moses had no record in heaven. The angels that came to walk with the mighty prophet were stranded on earth for 40 years. Because they looked at the guy, the guy was living the way of water. Princess is all over, satisfying his pleasure. He was a man of arms. All he knew was the way of flesh. So the angels had nothing to write. Until the Bible said, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 9, he said, when Moses was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What has happened to him? He's called body. body. All of a sudden, the things that gave him pride, those things don't count anymore. Have you been to that point where you went somewhere and you heard somebody and when you came home you wanted to sleep you were rolling on your bed like this. You couldn't sleep. It's called body. Bodies are momentary distress that the Holy Ghost creates in the heart of a man to kill his appetite and turn him to the Lord. He said when Moses was come of age he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What gave him the right to stand in the courts of Pharaoh was his connection with Pharaoh's daughter. But right now, a new kind of body has been created in his heart. So the things that constituted his appetite had died. So all of a sudden, Moses shows up and he said he's part of the Israelite. Ah, how will a man leave the palace and go to join slaves? It's called body. If you live in pleasure, the only thing that can disconnect you from pleasure and go the direct or even though it may be difficult at the beginning, his body. He said he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God because he had respect to the recompense of the reward. God had shown him something that he robbed him of sin, and he went all of a sudden he began to kill the Christian. His God body. When he became too much, they spotted him and he ran away. He became a shepherd. The guy that was commanding an army in Egypt suddenly begins to lead ships. Body. That's why the daughter of the governor can come for your prayer meeting and something stays in her mind. And then you say you are going for a retreat in the forest for seven days. And then she follows you. She has never known how to sleep in the forest before. But the body will not let her enjoy the pleasure of the bed anymore. The greatest blessing God gives to a man of appetite. If your belly has become your God, the greatest blessing God will give you is called the body. Because that body will carry you to the direction of your call. And if you don't find your call, you have no meaning. Because the reason you were created is the purpose for which you were designed. And until you begin to touch those purposes, you will never strike a chord in heaven. That was why Moses lived for 40 years. There was nothing to write about him. Because he was not striking any chord in eternity. But the moment what it came, the scribes began to write. The scribe, they told us how that he went to Oren, the back sides of the desert, and he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. Suddenly the flashlight turned to Moses. Did you read the life of Paul? There was nothing to write about Paul until he had an encounter 
and he called. And then he began to live the life that was written concerning him before he was called. Most of us will not realize it. We will live for our appetite until the day we have our last breath. And when we cross to the other side, then we will discover that we didn't do anything about the reason we came to the world. So we strode in the world, but we walked in the world as dead men. Because the man that lived for pleasure is dead even while he walked up. So most of us in the church, we are dead. Not dead as dead to flesh, but we are dead to the whispers of Zion. If God wants to bless a man of appetite, he gives him a body. That was the factor that delivered Moses. And that thing led Moses to the, the mountain of his encounter. How many bodies have you aborted? You come for a meeting, God gives you a body, and then you go home this Oh God! Oh boy, you see, season and movie. You say, which movie? That. And the Holy Ghost begins to flash you quickly. Don't go there. Kai, kai, kai. You feel it, you feel it. So let me watch part one. And then you watch part one. Then you watch part two. You watch part two. You watch part three. When the body is aborted, then you come and meet down right at 11 p.m. You say, Jesus, I love you. Then the angels will look at you like this and shake their head because you don't know you are dead. When God blesses you with a body, it's like a child. Incubate it until the castration period is complete and you give birth to it. Because that will be the only thing that will count in your life. What if Moses aborted that body? He would never have become anything. The name Moses would have been forgotten forever. But because he attended to that body, that body was there for 40 years. It was not three days. How did he live his life to manage that body? Some of us, God comes with a body of fasting. And after two days, we vanish. And then you think, you will say, uh, We will take Africa. We will take uh, Newe. Or Kamos Power. Anambramos Power to the gospel. How many times did you hear that Moses shouted? Moses for 40 years was incubating body. Body. When the angel appeared to Manoah's wife, and said she will be a child, and that child will be a Nazarite. You know what it means to raise a Nazarite? That means there are many food you will not eat. The angel told the woman never to drink any strong drink. So all through the time she was pregnant, never drank. She carried the child until she gave birth to bed. If she drank any alcohol, if she came for your birthday party, if you like, drink the best drink in the world. By because of that body, she is not permitted to drink it. This is why you see some men, we come out, people are talking. You want to say something, but if you talk, you will diffuse the body. So sometimes you do like this. If you don't want to kill yourself, you will just lose. And then you go home. You will lie on the bed, you will roll like this and cry. What you are doing is that you are incubating the body. That's the way of the spirit. People think spirituality is to come and act in church. Oh my God, if you know the will of the Spirit, you will understand why a harvest will leave his family and go and dwell in the forest. You think he loves the forest. What that Spirit put on his life for that thing to manifest, he needs to sacrifice his relationship with everybody. So he dwells there. He's called body. But we are abortors of bodies. The Holy Ghost cries. A man of God fasts for 40 days and comes for a meeting and releases a body in your heart. Then you go home after three days, you dissipate the body, and then you come and say, God, uh, uh, reviver, reviver is coming. You come for prayer meeting, you say, Kaba, Susu, But you are praying dry. Because your own dimension that the Holy Ghost impregnated you with, you diffused it. This is called transformational Bible study. So when next God releases something in your spirit, sometimes you will be banished from talking for three days. Want that thing to ever manifest, then you will never talk. And in the process, you will become another man. Did you read about Moses in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1? He said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Because he passed the test of incubating bodies. He no longer was a prince in Egypt, he became a God in Egypt. The difference between where you are now and where you will be is how well you manage the bodies that God put in your heart. Because those buttons are the things that will lead you in the direction of your encounter. And if you reach your encounter, you will never.
never find the instructions of your destiny. Because the instructions of your destiny, the abilities of your destiny, they are locked in your encounter. When Moses came to Horeb, God began to speak. That was when the rod that Moses had became the rod of God. Because he had an encounter that was destiny impacting. Did you read about Ezekiel? He said, I was among the captives by the river Kappa. And I saw visions of God. That encounter was what made him a priest to become a prophet. The intelligence of body. Many believers walk without body. At any point in your life where you are not spiritually pregnant, there's crisis. We carry things in our bowels. We carry things. Those things are the things that determine our behavior. A man who is carrying a body, you don't need to tell him to live well. There are things he can't do. When I know there's a body here, no ladies will chat you on Facebook. Say, sir, please, I want you to be my friend. You will quietly go and check where the block body is and block her. You will not even as much as check the name or picture because if you try it, something may be aborted on your inside. So because you don't want to die, what you will do is that you will lock every gate around your life. That was why Job said he had a covenant why with his eyes. Why should he behold a virgin? Body, body. The reason we need to teach people about good character is because they don't have body. If we know how to impregnate people with body, their lifestyle will change. The day body comes upon your life, you will change. The way you talk will change. That was why Moses was able to abandon Egypt and learn to live in the wilderness. The intelligence of bodies. It is the strategy of God for dealing with the man of a bogus appetite. So you do know that you have a lot of appetites. What you need is a body. Every fair lady you see, you are looking at this. As you finish that one, another one passes. Yeah. You need body. You are in the room, you just finish eating. The next thing somebody just came from, Mr. Beats or chicken republic, and you just perceive the aroma of the chicken, you say, oh, boy. Everything that appears to you, you want. You need a body. That's the strategy of heaven for dealing with the man of the appetite. Have you explained yourself? And your appetite the things that control and motivate your life. Then you need a body. So when we begin to pray tonight, you will ask the Lord for a body. Because some people, their challenge is not appetite. There are some men that have been trained by poverty. So naturally, they don't know how to eat in the morning. Even when they have money, eating in the morning, they have forgotten it. It is not part of their brain. Biochemical processes have aborted it. So for that kind of person, food is not a problem. He doesn't know. Even he's a millionaire now, but if you want to give him food, he will say, go and bring pound it. He doesn't understand the way of pleasure. Poverty has trained him well. So that kind of man, this one may not appeal to him. But there are men that we call men of the flesh. Those ones, everything they do, do is for self exhortation So the guy comes somewhere, they say, please, we have problem. Can you help us? He says, brother, business is bad. And then when you say, okay, no problem, he now stepped out, and then people entered an occasion, and they came, they said, Odoku, Odoku, Omeka Naya, Omeka Then he will do like this, and remove one bundle of one thousand, he will throw it. They say, Omeka Naya, they put like this, he remove another one thousand, and throw it. That's a man that could not give you one thousand, but because he came to the public and they began to hail him, what happened? Money that was not available. Such people are people of the flesh. They live for their self-glorification. They live for their self-preservation. They live for self-aggrandizement. Everything they do is so that it can satisfy them. Their life is characterized by different kinds of lust. They will never do anything that will not attract praise to them. There's a way God deals with those men. If self-preservation is your motivation, they say, give money. Say, ah. Uh, but this money will be given is waiting to happen. He will never do anything until that thing has a direct benefit. A man of the flesh. How does God deal with a man of the flesh? He's simple. He breaks it. 
So some of us, the only way God will and can use us is to do what? To break us. Some of you have cried and prayed. You have asked the Lord, use me. God now say, okay, when you go for meeting, pray, let people fall down. He's using that one to try you whether you can handle power. So you now go for meeting. You pocket your hand. You do like this. You come, you do like this. Why? That's not the Holy Ghost. You want people to know that oh boy, this guy carry power. So when you are going and they say, hey, oh boy, see the man of power. Then you act as if you are humble. Clown. When you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there. When you are there, 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 you know, sometimes when I go to pray, when I ascend, then the Holy Ghost will just come and begin to show me my life. God is humorous. The Holy Ghost will begin to show you why you did what you did. 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 So sometimes in the place of prayer, I use one hour to repent. That time we were greeting the people and doing like this. It's not because you know or no. You want them to say, God, this boy is highly respectful. This boy, this boy. As harmless as it is, it's the way of the flesh. So doing good things with the wrong intentions and motivation, it will cause you to be robbed of power. How does God deal with a man of the flesh? He breaks him. Did you read the story of Jacob? He was the custodian of the Abrahamic blessings. Everything that Abraham represented was resting on his head. He stole it from his brother. And while he was going, he collided with an angel. And the guy that was just blessed is asking for another blessing. The one you have, have you used it? You are the one that went for a crusade and when he imparted you and you came home, you had a, a, a to do 21 days fast. You started the fast day. after three days you stopped. You have not been able to bet and to fight to play what you received. The next thing they say, Bishop, when the boy is it you run, you say sir. You run, you say, want more. The guy always wants more. Self-preservation. When God comes, He will break you. Because your problem is not a lack of blessings. Your problem is that you are full of flesh. So the only thing God could do for Jacob was to do what? Was to break him. And when Jacob was broken, the angel did not need to bless him. He said, as a prince, thou hast power with God and has prevailed. So the guy was always full of power. But the reason he didn't manifest was because he was full of flesh. So if God wants to release what is locked up and encaged by flesh, what he wants is that he breaks it. And when you lean on a staff, then you will learn that your confidence is not in flesh. It should be in God. Have you been to a point where they say, come and sing? You are the lead worshiper. And because you have a golden voice, every time you want to come and sing or lead worship, you think it's about voice. So when people are around, you come. Baratara Hikini, the Lima Baratara Hikini, is in the game. Who told you? Who told you that's how the spirits record the, the mark? So you think the mark is about good voice? If it's about good voice, then the way you can come and sing now. Who told you it's about good voice? <laughs> Full of flesh. Before she came to do that song, she was in the saloon till 12, 12 or 1 a.m. She changed her with one that night because they told her she will lead the worship in the crusade tomorrow. So when she's leading the crusade and doing like this, 
You thought her hair was disturbing her. All those things were rehearsed in front of the mirror. You don't know the way of flesh. The lady that we minister in the crusade where people are trusting God to heal the lame and the blind instead of her to pray through that night so that she will be able to download the glory of God. She was in the saloon because she's conscious that at least everybody in the village will see her. So she's doing like this. The shoe she's wearing is like this. <laughs> is there anything wrong with excellence? No, no, nothing is wrong with it. But where is your priority? Is it self exhortation? Is it self glorification? And you think you can do business with the spirit? You need to find out how spirits charge. They will first of all break you. And the breaking process most times is hard. You will cry. But God will use the earpiece. <laughs> he will not hear you. Lord, why? When you shout, you lose your voice. Go on. Come back. There will be earpiece until you are broken. Hope you know the angel battled with Jacob for night in morning. When Jacob will not change, you say, I will leave you and go now. But because of the Abrahamic covenant that was resting on Jacob, the angel needed to help the guy. So he touched him and broke him. This one I'm telling you, I know it by experience. Those days, while we were in school, ah, we were orators. So when they have a function, they will now invite us to come and speak on behalf of the student. So you will wait until everybody gather. You, you, you can never go there early. Ah, if you go early, you have, you have messed up. You wait until everybody gather. When they gather, then you come. Usually we used to have what they built in the center of the school. The, the statue of Aluta. Aluta continua. Victoria Asata. Aluta continua. Victoria Asata. Then they will invite Comrade Mike. Then the comrade will come up. <laughs> the man that God wanted to use to dispense his counsel is a comrade. Imagine if I was doing a Luther now. Then on the street we carry placard. We no go grill. We no go grill. We no go grill. God needed to help the young boy. So he came and broke me. Those days when you want to speak, you will lower your voice. And then you will quote three or four philosophers first. When you quote them, people say, oh boy, oh boy. When they come down like that, then you pocket your hand. George Washington once said, this is the soul of an army. He makes small number formidable. He procures success to the weak and esteem to all. Need to invite the way of discipline. Then you hear, hey, 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 hey. Say, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> ah! When we wanted to preach the gospel and God brought us to the sea, we came, we thought it was still written. So when you finish preaching, you say, God wants to heal people, God wants to bless people. By the time you are doing what I call, then half of the auditorium will go. You are doing not that call. People are going. <laughs> so everything you said here, that was when I realized that the gospel, we don't talk to people's head. We talk to their heart. So when Peter finished preaching, the Bible said they were pricked in their heart. Because it is spirit and life. It's not oratorial power. So God began to teach me a new syllabus. I had to pray in tongues for many hours before I preach. So when we come to preach now, we come trembling that God may show mercy. <laughs> because we have migrated. God broke my confidence. Many times I was embarrassed. You come and say, hey, God wants to baptize people with fire. When you are releasing fire, then people will just sit down. Some will cross their neck and be watching you like this. Some will just be dozing. You say, fire! Fire! You become like the prophets of Baal. And God began to, to humble me like that. 
I had no choice but to break. So I drifted from self-confidence to God-confidence. So when I come to pray now, I speak in tongues for long. I don't come to pray because I can talk. Because anybody can talk. If it were about talking, I would be the least. The way of breaking, the protocol of breaking is for men of the flesh. Some of us here are worship leaders. We think it's about a good voice. <laughs> the day God wants to help you, He will show you your scorecard in heaven. Then you know that you have been a worship leader for five years, but you have 0.1 over 100. <laughs> because maybe for you, for you, maybe every time you see what God wants to use your voice to achieve is to activate gifts of the Spirit. So your voice is actually a gate through which God comes to impart people and to activate gifts of the Spirit. But you have sung for five years and not one person's gift has been activated in the meeting. So you have no score. Another person may be Holy Ghost baptism. Whenever you are singing, God wants to baptize people in the Holy Ghost. But since you started singing, nobody has ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost. But when you sing, people are jumping, they are excited, and you think you are doing so much. Men will clap for you, but the angels will be wondering, is he okay? Maybe what God wants to achieve through your voice is so that whenever you sing, demons will be cast out of people. So that people who came to your meeting in bondage, as they hear you singing, they team of the name. Did you read about David? When he played his harp, he was able to exorcise demons. But you are thinking people are dancing. When demons will be crying out, they came with their demons, they left with their demons. And then you think you have served God, you have not. The flesh must be broken. But many of us are not broken. That time the Holy Ghost came to you in the market. And you did something and you must apologize. Ah, yes, they say you must. You say, no, I have forgiveness in Christ. This is not the Holy Spirit. I have forgiveness in Christ. What you have done is that you have empowered your flesh. You say, but I will not apologize. Everybody know me. I'm the fellowship prayer secretary. How can I pray you? Go and apologize that he lied. And the Holy Ghost say, you must apologize. Then pray you will come. If he wants God to help you, he will not say, please forgive me. That money that was missing, I stole it. You know what will happen to Preo? From that day, his pride will be broken. Because what he created before the people, God has destroyed it. So when he comes to pray now, he will no longer pray with arrogance. He will be praying knowing that Kai. Some people hear his story. So Preo will be what? Broken. So those things you run away from. You can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If you don't do those things, you will never change. Because spirits begin to help you from the point of your obedience. Spirits begin to connect with you from the point of covenant. So even though Jacob carried the Abrahamic blessing, he had no power until the day he was broken. That was the day he became a prince in heaven. And Jacob will come to a point and he will gather his children. In Genesis 49, say, gather around me. Gather around me, sons of Israel. I will tell you the things that will befall you. <laughs> Imagine a man comes and says, Sister, sister, you came from a poor family, but I make you a millionaire. In the next five years, you will handle 10 million. The person who wonder whether you will have a job, whether you will be doing business, he has power with God. That was how the elders of old lived their lives. So a man blessing his child will tell his child, I bless you with the dew of heaven. I bless you with corn and wine. How about inflation? They were princes in the spirit. Jacob will tell his son, he said, Reuben, you are the first for my loins. You are the excellency of wisdom, the excellency of dignity. He said, but as unstable as water, you will not prosper. So it doesn't matter what Reuben does, no matter what he does, the man says you will not prosper. So he can't prosper. Even if he likes the best business in the world, he says you will not prosper. Who is talking? He said, Prince. Because he was broken. He said, The scepter will not depart from Judah, but the shield comes. Every king in Israel came to the lineage of Judah because a man says you are king. 
how do they speak so much power? When we want to equip the church, we teach them the way of yieldedness so that they can be broken by the Holy Spirit and God will make a champion out of each other. Equipping, equipping is an experiential reality. Most of us, there are things we will never give up for God. That Facebook, every day she must spend five hours there. And God now says, if I must use you, quit Facebook. He didn't say go on holiday, quit. And he will carry the phone like this. He will drop it. He will carry it again. He will drop it. He will carry it. If you want God to use you for you, your syllabus is not doctrine anymore. It's a law. The day you delete that Facebook and become faithful to that law, the power of God becomes strong in your life. So somebody else may fast and pray to walk in power. Your own law is no Facebook. You will die to it for you to see the hand of God. It's called the transformational doctrine. Some of us is talking. The Holy Ghost comes now and says, Don't talk again. If you are in the gathering, don't talk. So you are there. If they say something, you now have an inspiration of what to say. So, God will not manifest because you, you prayed in tongues. God will manifest because you obey the law of the spirit that he gave to you. That's why you see some people, they are worship leaders, they move in healing. Others are prayer warriors, they move in healing. Others are fasting machines, they move in healing. It's not the formula. It is the law of God gives you. It is the way of breaking the man of the flesh. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. We don't have time. We don't have time. I wanted to show you the third principle. But we don't have time. We don't have time. These ones I've taught you. Most of you will not remember it yet. You know what? You know how this kind of teaching works? When you go out next time and you want to laugh, then the Holy Ghost will appear like this. Then you will remember that what? That you can't if you will be relevant with God. You wake up in the morning, God says, fast, you want to eat as usual. Then when you carry the food, it will look like the food is a sin. You will drop the food, you will come back by 10 a.m. You will carry it, it will look like a sin. That time you have begun to walk with God. I brought this one to add to what you know. Most of you are Bible students. You have all the doctrine, you have all the dogma. But I came to show you the voice of God. That thing that will change your life. These are how they are made. That was why Moses did not read the Bible. But he became a prophet. He was faithful in all of the house of God. Because he followed the economy of body. Until he appeared in Horeb mountain of God. That was why a man like Jacob, in their days there were no scriptures, but they became custodians of the true son of God because they were broken. Until you are broken, the scriptures will not make sense to you. Until you are to bodies, the scripture will not make sense to you. You may read the whole scripture, but you still wonder why? Why? Maybe an angel appeared to you when you were 12 years old. And say I will make you a prophet. And then now you are approaching that. You still have not been able to give one word of knowledge. Why? They are called the economy of bodies. The protocol of breaking. You are not yet broken. It's when God breaks you that he can walk with you. Many of us need to be broken tonight. For me, I was an orator. And God needed me to be a preacher of the gospel. I didn't know that oratory was not part of the credentials. So I came out with pride as a talker. We read dictionaries those days. Ah, concocted phrases and sentences. When God came, he looked at the foolish boy and he laughed. So God began to hammer. Began to hammer. Began to hammer. Things were breaking. Sometimes somebody offends me. I want to react. Then there is a seed, it's a nice block. It comes from my heart. Say, Tom, sometimes I will go back and we need to pray in tongues for one hour before that anger will go down. I was serving in worry in 2013 as a youth copper. The pastor called me and pleaded with me in my court. He said, Please come and be part of this program. I left worry around 12 in the afternoon. 
I reach my God at 12 midnight. When we finished the program, God moved mightily. People gave seeds upon seeds. I was supposed to return to worry on Tuesday. Pastor Seka is trying to put some things in order, but not to worry. Before I reach on the child, he transfer something. When I was reaching on the child, I called the man, his phone was off. Oh my God. I didn't have a dime in my pocket. I was stranded. A young boy at that time. Entering on the child by 6 p.m. I didn't know anybody. What will happen to me? The man was callous enough not to think about my welfare. This is a man that I came to assist in his program. Whatever happens to him, that's his business. How much was he going to give me? I close 5,000. But he offed his phone. It was as I approached on it, I looked into the heavens and I called for help. Instantly, I received an alert of 33,000 from Delta State Government. I had two more years to pass out. They pay that money when you pass out from NYC. Sometimes you even struggle before you have it. My own came two months before passing out because God showed mercy. And when I returned to worry that night, I was enraged and embittered. I said, The day he picks my call, he will hear something. And that night, God came and said, Pray for him. Pray for who? Is it not better? I thank you for joining me, Or for their life. Say, pray for him. I knelt down for close to 30 minutes. I didn't know what to say. Until after 30 minutes, tears began to come down from my eyes. And I said, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. I continued like that until after one hour. Before I said, Lord, for he didn't know better. What was God trying to make out of me? He was teaching me the heart of the Father. Because the reason we move in power is not because it's a show. Because we have understood the compassion in the heart of God. So when we see people in crisis, they are overwhelmed. That is not sympathy. That is compassion of the Spirit. For God will carry you to a school where He will break you. So that when you come, you don't see the order of man. You see in the order of the spirit of the living God. So while you minister in the spirit, you become one with the Holy Ghost. It's a simple of processes. The sacrifice of alignment. Many must be broken before they can manifest the dimensions of God. The reason our Christianity is weak is not because we don't pray. The reason our Christianity is weak is not because we don't fast. The reason our Christianity is weak is not because we don't know the Bible. Our Christian is weak because we don't know how to walk with the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all reality. The way the Holy Ghost guides a man is different. Your own syllabus will be different from mine. So for me, and they be a man of affluence and appetite, the Holy Ghost will come to me with bodies. So every new month, there will be a button in my heart to pray, to fast fast. That is where the window of my encounter is in heaven. But for you, the Holy Ghost may keep giving you laws, laws. Give your money, give your money. Every time I enter your hand, I ministered for many years. I was not permitted to touch the honorarium. I come from a meeting. Sometimes I borrow money to go for the meeting. And there was a law always to give the honorarium to another preacher. I died many times. Until the day came when the Lord said, I will begin to announce you. When those times came, I could come for a meeting and I will tell you, I will wear my garment of fire now. And in five minutes, I will ascend. How did I know it? God taught me certain things that were peculiar to me. Those things you have been rejecting and fighting, that's what will make you. You may go for 10 retreats and amount to nothing until you begin to pay attention to these things. How I wish I had the time to teach you about the principle of detachment. How God deals with the man that is a fearful man. He wants to serve God, but fear will not allow him. How God uses detachment principle to help him. He said to Abraham, leave your country. Leave your kindred and leave your father's house. And come and we show you a land. He separates you from everything that forms your trust. Until you have nothing to hold on to anymore. Then you begin to cry to the Lord. Have you been to the river before? I don't know if you have a river here. Those days when we were small, we used to go and attempt to swim from one side of the river to the other side. Sometimes when you are swimming, as you are approaching the bank, 
all the muscles of your hand dies. You can't even swing your hand anymore. So you are hoping you will see a root of a tree. Sometimes you hold the root like this as you pull it, it will remove. You will go back into the water. You hold another one. The root will remove. When you discover that the root can't help you anymore, then you begin to pray in your heart. Because you know that if God doesn't give you strength, you are about to be drowned. That's what God does when He detaches you. You have problems, you say, God, I know you will provide. Then the next thing you come, carry your phone, you call your uncle in Lagos. That's your God that will provide. He say, Woe unto the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh. For the arm of flesh will fail. But many have not mastered how to wield the hand of spirit because they are is still in themselves or in others. Men of fear are men that their confidence is in other people. If God wants to help you put your confidence in Him, He introduces the detachment principle. So Abraham left everything he knew and as he walked, he walked in dry ground and God began to teach him how he can subdue the powers of nature. And the point came, Abraham became like a God. It was that very thing that he committed to his son Isaac. And Isaac could dig wells in dry ground and he brought out water. So it doesn't matter. Hundred people may be doing pure water business. You came and started your own and you became a millionaire. That's the mystery of working with the spirit. It's the detachment principle. It separates you from your civilization so that he wants to put something in your life that can change your world. These are things that believers are not taught anymore. We come to church, we are waiting for prophecy. This week, God will give you your car. That's why we are weak. You will go abroad. Man. We don't know the technology of being strong. As you leave these meetings, the bodies that the Holy Ghost places on your heart, it's time to begin to attend to them. Yours may be just fasting, morning to 12, and God may say 21 days. Yours may be praying the night. That's the key to your destiny. The key to your destiny may not be about all the retreats you attend. They are very important. But God can come and say, Unduka, pray around 1 a.m. in the morning. If you are not faithful to that instruction, you will struggle your life and there is nothing God will come for you. If mercy comes again, then God will bring the instruction back. For some of you, God may tell you many times, to do things that are a reverse of your operating system. He's trying to break you. And God succeeds in breaking you. Your confidence will no longer be in yourself, but you'll be in God. That is what made men to become as bright as the stars of the heavens. They understood these secrets. So even when scriptures have not been written, they were men that walked with God. Now we have all the scriptures. We know the mind of God, but we still cannot walk with God because we violate the protocols of life that brings about the energy of God into the chambers of our lives. Bodies. Bodies. The protocol of body is what makes generous. The protocol of breaking is what makes champions. And the principle of detachment is what makes fathers of generations. You can never be a father of a generation until you refuse for that generation to become your teacher. That was why he removed Abraham from the hall of the Chaldees. Took him to a place and taught him a new order of lifestyle. And when Abraham returned, God pioneered a new way for his life. He came to John. He was the son of a priest. But there was no way he could create another civilization that had this nature to decide Israel. Remember, for 400 years, there was no prophet in the land of Israel. In theology, it's called the Dark Age. How will a prophet arise? Because the Messiah will not come unless there is a voice of a man crying in the wilderness. Who will be that prophet? The only way God could create a man that sustains a different texture of his work with God was to separate him. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible said he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. There are many things that God cannot do with you unless it he detaches you. You may have the revelation in your spirit, but you will not have the power. Paul said, when it pleased God to reveal his soul in me, I did not confer with flesh and blood. I went into the wilderness of Arabia. 
He stayed there in Arabia until God came and taught him the syllabus of life. And when Paul returned from Arabia, he became a colossus. Paul was the wisest among the apostles. It was Paul that God gave the responsibility of building the foundation of the church. Everything we practice today as a way of life, it was written by Paul. How did Paul tap into that level of wisdom, technocracy, and mastery in handling spiritual truth? Was because he obeyed the detachment principle. As a copper for eight months, I was not permitted to use my phone. My battery was removed from my phone. Many days I went hungry. There were too many people to call. Demons even came to my room to do me mind bending. They will make me feel lonely for three days. I will carry my battery, put it back, and want to call, but it's as if there's a dagger in my chest. I will remove the battery drop again. I died. And God began to put oil on my top. That was when I moved from an orator to a man of utterance. Because those detachment principles, you must satisfy it. Even Jesus, the Son of God, before he began, he had to go. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, that the Spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days. There he prayed and fasted. If Jesus, the Son of God, must obey the detachment principles in order to be able to manifest the dimensions of God, who told you you can escape it? The destiny of Jesus was to be the light of the world. But that will never happen unless you obey the detachment principle. After he was detached as he returned, the Bible said the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, cutting of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness had seen the great light. The day he was born, John prophesied that he was the light. But the day he manifested was the day he completed the requirement of detachment. That's where God will show you who you are. God will come to you and tell you suddenly that your right hand is a hand of power. Every time you minister, touch people with your right hand and his power will move. That is not in the Bible. It is his voice to you because you obey the detachment principle. It's in the silence of our heart that we hear the voice of spirit. When you are living for our better we are young people. So I need to tell you on time. Because if you don't obey these things, you may become a theologian, but you will not know the ways of God. When you are there. of the Holy Ghost if you want to amount to anything in this kingdom. The detachment principle is a must. Some of us, the reason we can never be important is because we have lived with people too much. So our life is a sample step. By association, some of us can never be anything. That's why God must separate us. I read a story many years ago, written by Miles Monroe. He went to Africa to preach in Zimbabwe, in the city of Harare. And the king of that land told him the story. He said, many years ago, there was a shepherd in this land. And he said, the shepherd had many shepherds. And one of these days, he went to the sides of the two clays. And he heard the roar of a lion. And he ran away with the sheep. But the point came when the green vegetation in the land was gone. So he had to return to that spot again. So he summoned courage and he went there. When he got there, this time he saw a little corn, a young lion. He was afraid. But he saw that the young lion was helpless. So he waited for some time. When he saw that the mother didn't come out, he now went and picked the young lion and took the young lion. 
and the young lion began to grow with the sheep until it became a very big lion. But even though it was a lion, it was still living with the sheep and eating grass because that was how it was raised. One day they went to graze along the river bank and when they came, the sheep came to drink water, the lion saw its image and ran away. Because all the while, that lion thought it looked like the sheep. He didn't know it was a lion. And another time, as they went to Greece, by the backside of the desert, suddenly a huge lion came out of the mountains. And when the lion roared, the shepherd and the sheep, they all ran away. This lion, who was raised with the sheep, was also running. And somehow, it's as if it understood the voice of that lion behind. And it stopped. He turned. And the lion from the forest roared again. And he realized that he knew that language by instinct. What is being? And in top time, that lion roared. This lion that had lived with sheep all its life, he found courage on its inside. And when this lion that had always been a sheep by association, when it roared for the first time, the whole forest shook. Hey. It realized that it was not a sheep. It only became a sheep by association. It realized for the first time that its DNA was the DNA of a lion. And from that day, it ceased to be a sheep. He went back into the forest and joined the other lion to reign like a king. Some of you here are prophetess. Some of you are apostles. Some of you are leaders that will stand in political corridors and represent the interest of the kingdom. But you have need with people. Lord. So you think you are like one of them. Tonight, I want to roar in the spirit so that God will show you who you are. Because if God show you who you are, your priorities will change. For Moses, the Bible says he was able to accept the body of God because he saw him that was invisible. What have you seen? You have not seen who you are. That's why you live for bread. The Bible says, Go unto the city whose king eats in the morning and whose princes eat bread for drunkenness and not for strength. He said, For blessed are ye, O lands, who king is of the noble and whose princes eat for strength and not for pleasure, not for drunkenness. Today we will cry so that poor things will come on someone. Even if it's one person, the Lord succeeds in placing a burden upon. Our job is done. When you are there, you want to pray? When you are there, 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 when you are there. When you are there, 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 listen. Listen, listen, listen. We are about to pray now. But the energy of your ordination is in your spirit, man. One of the ways to bring it out is by prayer. Those days when I was growing up, I was a football fan. They called the sky wide. We watched football every Saturday for hours. That was my life. Until God came and put a body in my heart and my story began to change. If you can access body tonight, your life will take a U-turn. The scriptures you read will begin to make sense to you. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Go ahead and begin to speak in tongues. Shut up. Sis, 
yeto pate sate e peto bra yeli yeto kabra ate to bra natali ilige bana kobra na nasozelita ato pate teke e ke prati di lato prododo yagata Siza, wante tante leke de prede di natatolia Yento bata, paru ate torate Eso zete toria, ato bate taliara Aiko ponate, bato de tezuzo Yete predina, abra toto bato Bato lide krodo, ele tora ita Asa zelira, raito brane nale Baga pana kapana le kobo no kobina kati Ila kapato, e prate to I have to keep it calm so that I will tell you this thing in a way you will hear and understand. Because every day you go out, these are the things that happen with you. But as you begin to pray, in the first five minutes, some of you will find yourself weeping. Those are the set of people God is giving bodies. As we hit ten minutes, some of you, the power of God will begin to hit you. Those are the set of people God is breaking. But when we hit fifteen minutes, some of you will begin to run around here. That's ones, God will separate them. For a mighty walk in the kingdom. Come on. Go ahead. Kaila Haita Empetato Pratetiata Esili Ketero Raite Keti Ekitena Tatotiato Opalaito Kete Metro Anta Yato Patilia Ile Ketati Patenato Porodi Ekla Duanta Duante de Noro Ratete Lidia Aito Parayete Taloya Aito Patuante Tokotra Ilata Yato Penato Bonocobia Aili Garadiana Po Ike Parayete Da katina lura tamia wasa bata paro diada ope katina kubro do delete fruit to posetele ope kato pada kapa ya paria to pada tetolia ope kato pada tetole kapaya ope kato pada broto ura to pada kapa na lika pada diato wate epa laita ope rodo do ura to pada tao ope kato pada tao ope kato pada tao ope kato pada tao ope kato pada tao wale eko beraita ope kato pada kubo ure to pala kahe beraia to wa. Eko wata toto beda tayi ila kata ko obre kata ila kabra ni na ko obre kata kato oli ata ko e ya 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 wata ko bat wata ko e prediato la prodwato e prodwato prediato e prediato da hua e ya kata ko ya toto obre kata ko 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 we are to we are to we are to ay 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 karuato eteraita palayeto marianto petinata aba we sosedia ayete elaito patela ti ke penate e ke te lige parido to moro to pate ay ke to ya eteriato Rayate eso bloto parato patuato paruato patuato paruato patuato paruato patuato paruatiato bailaba 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 rada da ya do rada da da ya da ya do rada da 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 di ya do. Me pedi di ato, ura da 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 do, 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 ura da 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 do
Ato Marieto Ay como no lo todo What a da da do 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 Rato 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 Ay 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 